just connect back through the 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 link that i sent to them and so that we can continue the program so while waiting for them let's watch this other video on other summits that have been taking place to impact the continent and how to change things because we have discovered if we don't trade externally if we don't try to sell what we have and not only selling it raw but selling it as a finished product which is where we can really get the money that we need to use if the government only sells just internally and little money we cannot live on that money and that's what is making we are always on aids and aids which is never enough so so it is high time all the governments think of opening their borders, trading with other countries. Look at Rwanda and Kenya that have opened their borders. If you're in Africa, you don't need a visa to go to Rwanda. You don't need a visa to go to Kenya. Because of this, hundreds and hundreds of business people are flooding into these countries, looking for workers, moving up and down. And that's how the economy is turning. All these barriers, you want to go to uh, Namibia, you need to go through a whole process, two weeks, three weeks. All these business people don't want that. They want to be able to get their business in, get their product out as easy as possible but this is not the case with many African countries and that is really hindering the product progress in the economic sector most of them are even unable to rectify just the African continental free trade era uh, document to show that they want to be part of it because all what the document or the, the institution is trying to put down is that they need to be security in the continent first of all which will allow investors to come into the continent and invest they need to have policies in place that will make these investors secure so that when they put their business in place two years three years some war civil war something is not going to break out and make them lose everything no business person will want to get into a society like that so they need to be a stable political system a stable economy and they need to be security when they are their security they are sure that if they're coming with their millions and their businesses and they invest in your country they'll be able to have their return and not get war and some groups spoil everything for them secondly the visa process and all the the exit and entry process is just so complicated roads in the country is a problem you want to travel with your product from here to here some of these perishable goods you are not going to make them on time all of them will get bad on the way why can we not make roads that are easy to carry what we have to where we need them and then make things easy for people to exchange with each other and have the final product for us to be able to sell it out there economically we can do it but politically no because politics does not bring the money economic brings the money so each country should be thinking of, about this and also how to boost the economy let's follow what is happening in east africa they are not the best they are not perfect but when it comes to business and economy they are starting to understand it it's not perfect because they still have a lot of things to do for example kenya which has just opened its borders to everything kenya exports flowers tea to the uh, to the uk their former colonial master but uk exports cars technology all things that they sell them very expensive they it exports it to kenya how do they measure up with tea and flour that they export to to kenya or, or other agri agricultural product it does not match up so even though they are trying but they need to still step up what they are doing and it is going to give the best of what we are expecting so let's watch this video let's watch this video which still talks about what the African private uh, sector summit is doing and then we'll be right back after that. So let's watch this video. A thriving private sector is essential for Africa to achieve inclusive growth by structural... Wendell, you are the chair of the Africa private sector summit. We're here at this conference talking about the real importance of private public partnerships. Tell me more about the work that you do and why it's so important in this context. The work we focus on is trying to look at creating an enabling business environment, similarly stated, a conducive investment climate uh, in Africa. We want to change this narrative that Africa is a bad place to, to work. So we think that uh, we can uh, bring the private sector together and uh, promote the after agenda, the protocols that were signed by the heads of states we think this will make a difference, this will change the narrative, this will change the dynamics in terms of uh, investment across the continent. And so tell me, what are some of the biggest obstacles you hear from the private sector about doing business in Africa and how can we change that? The, the challenges are many. Uh, uh, access to finance, uh, civil unrest, uh, policies that are not conducive uh, in the countries across the continent. 
infrastructure, all of these are, in a nutshell, the basic problems across the continent. So if we were to focus on galvanizing the private sector to appreciate the AFTA. AFTA protocols uh, are embedded with key elements signed by the heads of states. Free mm -hmm. movement of people, a, a currency that is exchangeable of, across the continent, um, common passport, infrastructure issues, health issues. If we can come together and appreciate what I consider a gift, the AFTA as a gift to the private sector, then we'll make a difference. Absolutely, because I mean, this, this promise of the free trade agreement, everything you said, you know, the currency, the passport, Africa would really, like its power would just explode. So how can we make that promise a reality? What kind of actual concrete action do we need to see between now and this time next year when we're here again? You know, uh, this conference, the speakers at this conference have articulated these issues, all right? And most of the people, the presidents, the banks, at the Sena, the president of uh, Kenya, and a, n a number of others have articulated these issues. What we need to do now is to, the private sector, come together and get our leaders to sign up on an Africa Private Sector Bill of Rights for an enabling business environment. That would, uh, if this time next year, we should have a document that is ready to go to the heads of states for them to adopt. This is the simplest, easiest, fastest way under which we can have uh, after implemented, the REX protocols implemented, is to the private sector must come together, unite, and ensure that these things are done. That will be the success story of this conference, a, a UN Compact. That will be the success story. If, the, if these various elements will come together, uh, support to uh, uni unify, rather support this kind of agenda for what we refer to righting the wrongs of doing business in Africa, then I think we will be making some key headways in terms of Africa's development and transformation. And so that's exactly what you were doing, is bringing these people together so that you can take it, right, to these heads of state. That is correct. And that so this correct. time next year, we're going to be having a conversation about how you've done that. Well, we're kind of a little late. We think uh, by 2025, after 2025, there we go. The ADU heads of states meet uh, annually in February. And so we're hoping that uh, by 2024, that will be a discussion. And by 2025, we would have had a document in, in the hands of the heads of states for the adoption. So my last question to you, obviously you've spoken about like a lot of potential, a lot of ambition of things that could be great, but right now what is it that you see as the biggest promise, the biggest potential in Africa? The biggest promise, the biggest potential in Africa lies in one, revamping the education system to produce the skill sets to uh, transform your natural resources, your, your agriculture sector, your, your resources, uh, oil in, in the waterways, the ocean and waterways. So you have, I re normally refer to it as uh, the company of the ocean and waterways where you have natural resources, you have your soil, the ground, you can uh, reap uh, from it uh, your natural resources as well as uh, agriculture. And from the skies, you have what? You have uh, solar, mm -hmm. all right? You have water. It's renewable so, energy. Yeah, so we have all of these things that are favorable for the continent. We just need to produce the skill sets. And this is why we have another component of what we do called the Africa Education Trust Fund. That body is focused on transforming the continent uh, educational system to deliver the skill sets so that businesses whether it is uh, your basic service industry, whether it's uh, in the industrial sector, whether it's even government, public service sector, would have the skill sets to meet, to be able to meet the demands of both public and private uh, sectors. 
Fantastic. So you've got the skill set that's going on in one area. You're trying to get the private sector to get together in the other. And when these two come together, then Africa is really going to be a powerhouse. The breadbasket for the world. For the world. Yes. Wonderful.